Hi, hi, welcome. Thank you so much for joining me today for Reframe Your Brain. So glad that you're here. We'll just give everybody a minute to come in, get settled down. I've got over 400 people signed up uh, for this masterclass, which uh, I'm really excited about. And I'm so thrilled that so many people are interested in looking after their brain health. So thank you so much for being part of it. I can see the numbers getting up. If you're, if you're in, if you can hear me, just let me know in the chat. Say hi, say where you are, just so I can see if that's working. Oh, hi, hi Jenny, thank you, hi Sarah. Oh. Hi, Claire. Hi, Steph. Hi, Janet from Chicago. Thank you so much for joining me. It must be early, early for you. Hi, Caroline in Fulham, just down the road from me. Sheila, hi. Hi, Sarah. Hi from Sussex. Amazing, thank you. Right, okay. Chat is working. So. Oh, hi. Hi, Karen. Oh, my goodness. Karen Arthur, everyone. Uh, host of the most brilliant podcast, Menopause Whilst Black, who very kindly gave me an interview for The Power Decade, my book on postmenopausal health. Thank you for joining, Karen. Really glad that you're here. Um, so we've got the chat. Oh, thanks, Karen. Um, I've got the chat where we can chat and I'm going to ask you some questions and get your feedback on things. Um, and then we've got the Q&A, which is kind of for the bigger questions, which I'll come to at the end. So if I ask you something as we go along, like, what do you think about this or that? What, you know, what do you do for this? Pop it in the chat. If you've got a kind of broader question, pop it in the, um, Q&A. Hi Celeste Flower, what a beautiful name. Hi in York. Um, good, okay, that is all working. Now I am going to share my screen so I can share my little PowerPoint with you, uh, which is always a slightly scary moment. Here we go. Let's see if it works. See what you're seeing. Yes, there we go. Fantastic. So you are seeing no, that's not working. That's not working. I'm going to stop that because I can't see the other side of that. Right, I'm going to try again. Just bear with me. Um, I did a little rehearsal earlier and it was perfect. So, uh, of course, now it doesn't work when we get to this stage. Right, okay. Sorry about this, everyone. Keep telling me where you are, how you're feeling, what your day is like. Uh, and I'm just going to relaunch my PowerPoint while you do that. Um, okay. Okay, the PowerPoint is just doing its thing. So I will be with you very shortly. Oh, sorry, you've got a cold, Karen. Right. I will be with you very shortly. Uh, and if this doesn't work, we'll do it without the PowerPoint and I will just chat. It's quite a nice PowerPoint. I found some quite good pictures for you. Oh, thank you, Claire. Uh, right now I can't find it. Right, okay. Right, okay, let's try this one more time. Oh, 
Right, there we go. You can see a picture of me holding a green smoothie. Um, and I can see, hi Jenny, uh, I can see uh, what I'm talking about. So there we go. Okay, thank you for your patience. And thank you again for being here if you're just joining. We are here to talk about reframing your brain. And I'll explain exactly what I mean by that and why it's central to your journey, your path to reducing your dementia risk through this masterclass. I want you to worry less about dementia. And I know that's hard, but that's our goal today. If you're new to me, I'm Susan Saunders. I'm a health coach. I specialize in helping postmenopausal women to age well and prevent dementia. I coach one-to-one, -one. I run courses. There'll be more on that later. You can find me at Susan Saunders Health on Instagram. If you don't know my story, my journey to better brain health started when my mum was diagnosed with dementia. I was 36, I had a toddler and a newborn. This was over 20 years ago now, but it set me on a path to consider my own cognition and my own risk. And I'm sure many of you can relate. So I do worry a lot about dementia, but I have been able to build consistent habits in my own life, which I know are scientifically proven to reduce my risk. And that does reduce the worry. I became a coach so I could help others do the same. I'm one of the first people in the UK to qualify as a dementia prevention coach with American neuroscientist, Dr. Dale Bredesen. I'm also author of three books on aging well and postmenopausal health for women. But that is me. I want to talk about you. You're here because you also want to reduce your risk of dementia. Keep your brain resilient and powerful. And you know that lifestyle is our only hope of that right now. There's no medication that is going to save us at the moment. And I can't give you any guarantees. We could all do everything we can to reduce our risk and still experience cognitive decline, of course. I called this masterclass Reframe Your Brain because I'm going to take a guess that you're not thinking about your brain in the way that you could, and in my opinion, should. I want you to make your brain the hero of the story and find the version of who you are as a person who puts their brain first. The way you see yourself, your identity is key here. Seeing yourself as someone who takes care of their brain is the most powerful thing you can do for your cognitive health. What do I mean by that? Okay, really, really simple, cheesy example. If someone offers you something really unhealthy that you'd rather not eat, like, I know, like a donut with loads of icing on, and you say, and I've done it many a time, oh, I'm trying to be good. You know that, oh, I'm trying to be good. Then you're still identifying yourself as someone who eats super sugary foods. But if you say, oh, I don't eat ultra processed food or you know, that's not for me, then you're focusing your attention on your identity and who you are. Do you see the difference? It's kind of subtle, but it, it's who we think we are. And I know for us as women in midlife and beyond, putting our brains first is hard for three reasons. One, obviously very importantly, women go through a major neurological transition called menopause in midlife. And menopause is so much more than just the decline in our reproductive hormones, the end of our periods, that kind of thing. Oestrogen is like 
super fuel for our brains. So they go through a huge change at this point in our lives and we need to be aware of that and we need to, uh, that makes it even more important that we are looking after our brains and you know, we've got a more of an uphill battle than men, to be honest. And historically, we know women were valued for their looks their ability to reproduce, their ability to take care of people, not for their brains. And it's brilliant that we are a long way past that now, but I do think that that ingrained sense of our brain not being a priority stays with us. For example, we might still be thinking about exercise in terms of weight loss or toning up, for example, rather than how powerful it is for our brain health. And so many of us in our lives need to prioritize others. And our identity becomes wrapped up in who you take care of, who you work for, what you do. So our own health comes a long way down that to-do list. Let me know in the chat which one of those three resonates with you most. Are you thinking more about your menopausal brain? Has that had an impact for you? Do you feel that you're not thinking about your health in terms of your brain? Are you prioritizing others? So you know, one, two or three, let me know in the chat. Let me have a look at the chat. Karen, oh, two, one, lots of ones. Julie looking after everyone else. Celeste, number three. Karen saying, couldn't agree more, we exercise and brain, mind, health. Yes, it's good. What are we doing this for? Claire, stuck between parents and teenagers. Yeah, you know, I've definitely, definitely been there. One for Pamela and Rita. Yeah, yeah, so a lot, yeah, lots of, lots of menopause, lots of taking care of others. Yes, ab yeah, absolutely. Thank you, thank you. So, what do we need to do to reframe our identity as someone who puts their brain first? When it comes to building habits, we need to give ourselves evidence that we are looking after those big, beautiful brains that we want to value. We want to create a virtuous circle where we do a behavior that supports our brain health. And then we start to see ourselves as someone who's putting their brain health first. So we do the behavior again, and we continue to grow as that person who prioritizes brain health. Habits help define our identity and our identity, who we see we as, helps maintain our habits. That's the virtuous circle. And that is really the foundation of habit science. We are, what we repeatedly do, for better or worse. I'll say that again, we are what we repeatedly do. Let me give you an example of my client, Carla. You might identify with some of her issues. She works part-time from home and has three teen, almost adult children who rely on her a lot because her husband works away from home they live in a rural location, so there's a lot of driving involved. She also has responsibility for her mum, who's in a care home. So she has very little time for herself and has wrapped up her identity in being the person who does all the stuff for everyone else. That gives her purpose. Does that sound familiar? We had to work hard together to find time for her in among all this, and more importantly, to get her into the mindset of putting herself first, putting her brain first. So we carved out time after her school run and before she started work, just for her to go for a walk out in nature, just 10 minutes at first, and then we were able to work up from there. And I was able to hold her hand on the path metaphorically, and reinforcing that behavior and celebrating her wins. And then once she could see herself as the person who does that one thing, 
for her brain, brain health. She can do another. And then you start to build the virtuous circle. Let me know in the chat what your one thing is. Might be drinking plenty of water, daily walk, portion of berries. What's your kind of non-negotiable when it comes to your health, your brain health? Let me know in the chat. Let me see the chat. Have we got that? Oh, there we go. Claire's saying walk, counting hot lemon and ginger in the morning, walking, stretching, Patricia walking. Sean Greens, Claire walking, Sabine is exercising. Pamela, 30 minutes walk every day. That's great. That's a really powerful habit. Janet, a good diet. She is volunteering twice a week in my local park. Oh, that's amazing. That's a double win, isn't it? Because you've got all the brain benefits of volunteering and people who volunteer literally have longer telomeres and less, you know, their DNA is in better shape. And you're outside, amazing. Celeste, daily yoga, Caroline walking, Kate getting enough exercise, Julie's doing daily language practice, fantastic, stretching, Claire's doing intermittent fasting, Janet meditating, Rose was doing interesting things and interacting with other people, yes, brilliant, all really, really good stuff. And you know, some of these might feel like small wins, but they're all reinforcing your identity as someone who prioritizes their brain putting their brain health and reducing dementia risk first, which is really powerful. And as I said at the beginning, we have to nail this lifestyle piece because right now lifestyle is all we have. It's on us. Really interesting piece of research published last week reinforces this that I want to tell you about. New study uh, researchers at a university in Chicago looked at the brains of almost 600 people who were on average 90 when they died. So this was autopsy based research, but they've been following these people for quite a long time before they died. So it's quite a long study. They found that those with the healthiest lifestyle before they died had the lowest risk of dementia and that most cases of dementia were linked to unhealthy lifestyles. What really grabbed my attention with this report was that only 12% of the people who had dementia, uh, or the dementia cases were linked to amyloid plaque, the sticky clumps of protein, which are believed to cause Alzheimer's in the brain. And the, Autopsy showed that many people had this amyloid sticky stuff in their brains, but were actually cognitively sharp until they died. Amyloid is still a risk factor for dementia, but it's not the only factor. And what constituted a healthy lifestyle was relatively simple, if you've got the time and, and space to do these things. So not smoking, a low alcohol intake, 300 minutes at least of moderate exercise, uh, a diet with at least 75% adherence to the MIND diet. Now, I wrote about this in my newsletter this week. Um, MIND is a very elegant acronym which stands for Mediterranean Dietary Approaches to Stop Hypertension intervention for neurodegenerative delay. So it's basically like the Mediterranean diet, you know, the classic uh, diet of the so of Southern Europe of uh, people without um, access to lots of processed foods or indeed lots of money to spend on food. So lots of vegetables, whole grains, pulses, some fish, olive oil, that kind of thing but it's a, it has a slightly different structure, the MIND diet. Uh, it puts more emphasis on green leafy vegetables and berries and on cutting out processed food. Um, so uh, at least 75% adherence to that 
and uh, interesting uh, volunteering and doing interesting things got mentioned just now in the chat because people with a higher late life cognitive activity score i explain that um, were less likely to have dementia and late life cognitive activities were things like reading visiting a museum playing games like cards doing crosswords puzzles so quite straightforward things I and mean, bear in mind the average age of these people when they died was 90 and they you know, they were trapped up to that point so um they probably weren't climbing kilimanjaro but they were going to museums getting involved with interesting things um and all they had to have done to have got a good score on this was have done seven of those in the last year so it's not a huge number and all of these things we can integrate into what we do and who we are and i'll give you some concrete examples of what we can do some really quick simple wins uh, in just a minute but the key to all this is building the habits that support this, which is why I created my course Better Brain Camp. It's where I support you building these habits and gives you the confidence that you're doing the best you can for your brain health. It's a simple four week course. At the end of this session, I'm going to give you the details for how to join and a discount code to use when you sign up. But let's talk about the six pillars of better brain health. How do we make it simple? How do we get to that identity piece day by day, week by week? So you are becoming someone who puts their brain first. There are six key pillars to think about as we reframe our brain health. Nutrition, movement, sleep, stress reduction, social engagement, and cognitive and mental engagement. So you can see how those are all, how those link up to the uh, report that I just uh, referenced uh, about lifestyle and dementia, though they didn't talk about sleep. Um, in Better Brain Camp, we focus on nutrition, movement, and sleep, because I know that's what my coaching clients struggle with most. Get those right, and the rest falls into place. And for this masterclass, I've put together a simple list of habits to prioritize one for each pillar. Simple habits to build, easy ways to give yourself that evidence of your identity as someone who takes care of your brain. Please don't feel you have to do all of them. But you, if you're after a quick win, these should help. So now this one. I'm going out on a bit of a limb here. You might think I've lost the plot. Okay, nutrition. Bear with me, but I'm gonna guarantee that you will remember this. Eat the traffic lights. People who die with Alzheimer's tend to be deficient in certain nutrients. So I've come up with a way to remember those foods which give you the nutrients. You know the expression, eat the rainbow. It's very lovely, but there's lots of colours to remember. And also, you don't see rainbows very much. So I thought of an easier way. Eat the traffic lights, because we see a lot of traffic lights. OK, so uh, it really, you either think I've lost the plot or, or next time you pull up at the traffic lights, you'll be thinking, hmm, uh, what fruit and veg have I eaten? So lots of the nutrients that uh, people uh, with Alzheimer's are deficient in are found in fruit and veg, which are red, amber, and green. So red fruit and vegetables, you know, things like watermelon, pink grapefruit, apricot, melon, that kind of tomatoes, obviously strawberries, um, give us a lycopene, which is an antioxidant that helps protect cells from damage, and those very dark red, and I know I'm pushing this a bit, very dark red, sort of purpley uh, fruit and veg, like blueberries, beetroots, cherries, etc. They give us anthocyanins, which are neuroprotective. They reduce inflammation in the brain. 
and then the kind of amber and green you know orangey yellow and green fruit and veg spinach kale corn orange peppers all that kind of thing you know, sweet potatoes carrots all that kind of thing give us beta carotene which the body converts into retinol uh, which uh, supports the immune system and lutein and zeaxanthine, uh, which protect eye and brain health. So next time you're at the traffic lights, think, have I eaten red, yellow, green fruit and veg today? That's my little thing for you to remember. Hopefully you're still with me on that. Okay, movement. Build leg strength. Multiple studies have shown that strong legs are correlated with better cognition. There was some research published last year that found that older adults who followed a 12 week resistance training program had markers in the brain that correlated with the preservation of brain health. So feel free at this point to stand up, have a stretch, Squeeze your muscles, do a squat if that's your kind of thing. Anything that gets you moving. Because <laughs> we shouldn't be sitting down for too long. What happens when our muscles contract is they secrete chemicals called myokines into the bloodstream. And scientists have referred to these myokines as hope molecules. They're small proteins that travel to the brain, cross the blood brain barrier and protect the brain from the negative effects of aging. So each time you squeeze a muscle, particularly leg muscles, because they're so big, thigh, glutes, hamstrings, all those muscles, you're squeezing those big muscles, you're squeezing out a load of hope molecules, which make their way to the brain and are actually very positive for mental health. And also, um, are uh, you know, a protective for the brain which is um you know, really good obviously so you know, do feel free to have a little stretch and a squat uh if you and a squeeze of those muscles sleep now i know we could do a whole course on sleep um but we know it's really important for good brain health um are they worrying about not sleeping isn't so great so finding ways of letting go of the stress is important and i did a session uh, a few weeks ago with my co-writer on the age project annabelle abs who's got a book out called sleepless and we talked about how the what how detrimental the worry about not sleeping is and how we need to try and let go of that um, so a nice way of preparing for sleep, rather than focusing on a to-do list for tomorrow or worry about what you haven't done today, write an accomplishments list for the day. What have you accomplished today? What were the one or two or three things you did for, to put your brain first? Even if it was that 10 minute walk, being on this masterclass, Anything. Take a moment to celebrate that at the end of the day. Now, it comes to stress reduction. I know that, again, it's a really big topic, but recent research has shown that deep breathing exercises may reduce the risk of Alzheimer's. And people who practice the practice deep breathing exercises had lower blood levels of that amyloid beta that sticky protein which we know is a risk factor though lifestyle does seem to override it and there's some new research that's just come out about uh, stress um, and alzheimer's and we'll do a blog post on that really soon um, but the um this was a study that got uh people to practice slow breathing techniques in a five second rhythm in for five out for five that was it in for five out for five they did it for 20 minutes twice a day which is obviously quite a long time 
to put aside but it's just it's just one of those techniques if you're just somewhere like you know waiting for the bus just in for five out for five it's so simple you're in the car at the traffic lights thinking about what once you've thought about whether you've had your red yellow and green veg five minutes five breathing in for five out for five and what it seems to do is to help with heart rate variability which is a way of measuring the stress response um, so just a really nice simple thing to do that has got um that you know, makes quite a big difference and we can kind of work into the day social engagement find your tribe as we get older our needs from the people around us change if you have a social group that maybe revolves around social drinking big dinners that might not serve you and your identity anymore it might be time to look for people around you whose goals are more aligned with yours whose identities align with yours and that is something you will find in better brain camp fellow campers really support each other and that's been one of the really wonderful things about the previous camp that the interaction between participants how they all supported each other And finally, mental engagement. Break a habit to stretch your brain. I've talked a lot about building habits today. I'm now gonna suggest you break one, anyone, doesn't matter which. Our brains build habits to create shortcuts and make things easier which is incredibly helpful when we want to build, develop a good habit. When we do an action, we're happy with the outcome, we do it again and again and again, and it becomes a habit. But sometimes it's good to mix things up and rewire those neural pathways. And this can be as simple as brushing your teeth with your non-dominant hand, taking a different route to work, anything like that anything you can think of that is a really ingrained habit how can you change it so let me know in the chat of those six things which i have just rattled through i realized rather quickly uh which one are you going to try maybe this weekend eat the traffic lights work on leg strength your accomplishments list, a breathing exercise in for five, out for five, finding your tribe, breaking a habit to rewire your brain. Let me know of those, which one you are going to try from our six pillars. So we've got nutrition, we've got exercise, we have got sleep, stress reduction, social engagement, mental and cognitive engagement. So let me know, oh, the chat's going mad, which one you're gonna work on. I'm gonna look at the chat. Sarah's finding her tribe. Kara's literally sat down. Uh, right more walking, accomplishments list. Think about accomplishments rather than to-do lists of Julie. Leg strength, June, think about breathing and break a habit. Petra's breathing, leg strength, and eat the traffic lights, yes. Patricia, traffic lights and breathing for five, great. Sheila's gonna start an accomplishments list which includes breaking a habit, perfect. Double whammy. Pamela's, Accomplishments list is finding super problem. Janet's going to change things up. Rosa and Claire breaking a habit. Claire's working on leg strength. Karen says she's been beating herself up a bit lately. Don't do that, Karen. Yeah, think about which habit to break. Katie's thinking about breathing and accomplishments. 
Celeste says, as for accomplishments, I call it a ta-da list. Oh, I love that, ta-da. Oh, I'm going to be doing that later. Ta-da. That's um, quite me. Claire's been standing on one foot while brushing teeth. Recently started making myself chew food on the other side of my mouth. Yeah, that's a really good idea because we get very strong on one side um, rather than the other. And you want to keep your face muscles um, even. Okay, so that is good. That's a, a really good selection. Uh, yeah, and you're covering off all of those. Thank you. Um, yeah. Right. I'm not saying that these are just simple tips. I mean, they are simple tips, very simple tips, but I'm also conscious that doing all of them or just one of them, if you're not in the headspace to prioritize this, to put your brain first, can be very hard. I started by saying, I want you to worry less about dementia, but of course you're going to worry if you feel you haven't nailed the lifestyle habits which reduce risk. And that is why I put together Better Brain Camp to give you the confidence you're doing the best you can for your brain health. It's as simple as that. Now you're not feeling very confident, you're doing all you can for your brain. By the end of, your, of the course, you know that you've nailed it. That is my guarantee to you. I said at the beginning, I can't guarantee that you won't get dementia. I can guarantee that by the end, you will have, oh, hang on, something's gone. I can guarantee that by the end, you will have built the habits that will reduce your risk. How do we do this? There are four live sessions in March. Each one's around an hour long. They're all recorded so you can catch up if you miss anything, you can't make it. And in each live session, we take action so you can understand how to create healthy habits around three of the key pillars that we've talked about today, nutrition, movement, and sleep. I hold you accountable throughout our time together. My clients, and I know there are quite a few on this call, say so they can hear my voice in their heads when they're making decisions about their health. And I want that for everyone. I will put the link in the chat uh, and I'll add it to the email when I send the recording uh, out uh, of this session. And because you're here or because you're watching on Catch Up, you get a discount code, 20 pounds off, use CAMP20. And from the six pillars we've talked about in camp, I cover diet, movement and sleep, but you also get stress reduction from knowing that you're doing your best from your health. You get social engagement from a great group within the camp and mental engagement from learning new things and developing new habits. So it's all wrapped up in the course. So let me just find the link and I'm going to put it in the chat for you. Hang on, you know what, I'm going to, ah, here we are. Let me do that. Now, any questions, anything, I've gone over too quickly, anything that wasn't clear? There we go, there's the link for Better Brain Camp. It's all explained uh, on the link. Uh, do let me know. Uh, if you've got any questions about camp, if you've got any questions for me generally about your health, about uh, better brain health, about creating that identity, seeing yourself as somebody who puts your brain health first, or about those six pillars that we talked about, the six simple actions that we can do. Ooh. Oh, hang on, hang on, let me do it. All right, I'm going to put the link, hang on. I put the link in the wrong place. There we go. There you go, Petra. Hilda, there we go. Claire saying, my 70, 70, 77 year old auntie has good brain health. 
Her habit is to walk to the tube station, pick up a free newspaper so she can do the free crossword, and she goes to the same cafe for social interaction every day. Perfect. It's just building those things into our lives, isn't it, that, that make sense um, and uh, that, that are doable, that give us a sense that each day we're doing something that supports our brain health. Right, any more questions? Any questions about Better Brain Camp? Anything else? I will send, I'll send out the recording after this when I've done the thing it needs to do. Uh, and I will, over the weekend, I'll send out the notes with the uh, research because I know some people uh, like the, and like to see all the, the background and the research uh, that um, I've that I use to support this. Oh, thanks, Patricia. I'm really glad it was interesting and useful. Thanks, Petra. Thanks, Tracy. Thanks, Sarah. Thank you so much. Do you know, I know you've been here live, which is really amazing. Um, you do have a listen again, because I, I know I went through it quickly, uh, because I just wanted to keep the energy up. Uh, but any questions, anything uh, you'd like to ask me, do let me know. Thanks, Sabine. Uh, Rosemary, I like cake. I don't have it every day and I'm not fat. Is it an occasional treat? Okay, yes, absolutely. An occasional treat is okay. And actually you'd feel more deprived um, uh, if you didn't. It's, it's, it's just all about where you are in your health. I used a very kind of clunky example of a donut, but you know, it's all about where you are in your journey and your health and you don't deprive yourself. I would say that. Hilda, yes, please send the recording to friends. I'd be, that would be really great. Oh, Claire, I'm really glad it's made you think about brain health uh, in a different way. Yeah, thank you, Julie. Have a good weekend. Ah, oh, yes, Pamela did brain camp. Uh, yeah, okay, thanks, Janet. Thank you so much, everybody. I really hope to see you in camp. Um, and, uh, oh, big question from Claire. Thanks, Karen. So thrilled you were here. Really appreciate it. Take care. Bye. Claire, doable is the key word. Often our lists can be overwhelming and we let life get in the way. Overprocessed food is so scary and I try and avoid it. My daughter suffers with migraine, so it's crappy food issues are big no's in our house anyway, but we're all human. Yes, absolutely. It is all about finding what we can do, doing one thing, giving ourselves that evidence that we can do that and then doing the next thing. Celeste's going to make several changes immediately. Fantastic. Kate is another cake fan. And also I think it depends on the cake. Um, I shared on, I feel on Instagram, but I shared on the Age World Project Instagram, a cake that we've had on the blog for absolutely ages. It's got no processed refined sugar or um, fat in it it's got loads of it's got loads of dried fruits so it's very sweet um and it's made with green tea and lots of spices um and uh it's really nice uh so you know there's cake and there's cake i think i think that's it okay thanks leslie thank you so much everyone really appreciate you um being there oh cake recipe yes it's on the a World project instagram at a World project um, if you can't find it, Claire, just drop me an email and I'll share it. Um, <laughs> I love that this has become a conversation about cake. Okay, I'm going to leave it there. You're all amazing. Thank you so much for joining me. Really hope to see you in camp. Thank you so much for being with me today. That's fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye.